We've touched on the benefits of single flute cutters before in a previous video and given you some speeds and feeds for the 278Z end mill on the Shape Oko. Today we'll be talking about some single flute cutters you can use on the Nomad. We'll start with the smallest one in our inventory, the 282Z 2mm single flute. This end mill, though metric, has a quarter inch length of cut so it can be useful for detail work and common plate stock you would find in North America. For slotting, I would start with 10,000 RPM, 10 inches per minute with a 0.01 inch depth of cut. For pocketing, I would feed slightly faster because you'll never be touching more than one outer wall at a time, and your total cutter engagement will always be less than or equal to that of the slotting toolpath. 10,000 RPM, 12 inches per minute, 0.01 inch depth of cut, 50% step over. And finally, an adaptive toolpath, which is where these tools really shine. 10,000 RPM, 15 inches per minute, a 0.036 inch depth of cut, and a 0.012 inch optimal load. Our other single flute workhorse for the Nomad is the 274Z 8th inch end mill. It's got half an inch of usable flute length and just like the 282 is made from high quality American carbide. For slotting I would start with 10,000 RPM, feed at 12 inches per minute at a depth of cut of 0.012 inches. And though I'm usually emphasizing how important it is to keep your cut channels clean when doing 2D contours, I'm going to do this to demonstrate a point. Single flute cutters are immensely hard to clog, so you can actually go pretty deep in material without air blast. Will the surface finish suffer? Certainly, single flutes are not immune to chip recutting. But will the spindle bog down precipitously and aluminum weld itself to the cutter if the conditions aren't perfect? I won't say it's impossible, but in the hours and hours I've spent using these tools, I've never seen it happen. What about for pocketing? 10,000 RPM, 20 inches per minute, 12 thou depth of cut, 50% step over. And for adaptive, 10,000 RPM, 25 inches per minute, a 36 thou depth of cut, and a 15 thou optimal load. Though I know there's room to push these tools a little harder, these should be pretty safe and reasonable settings to start with. Hope this video was helpful for anyone looking to get through some non-ferrous metal projects. Good luck, and have fun machining, folks.